Hey everyone, welcome back to Education is Life, your go-to channel for unlocking the wonders of learning. It is me, Joy Edgo, and today we're on lesson 14 of the Arduino Uno R4 Ultimate Training Series, focusing on these two components. The DHT11 Humidity and Temperature Sensor, and a 16x2 I2C Liquid Crystal Display. In today's lesson, I'll guide you through connecting a DHT11 sensor to your Arduino Uno R4. I'll then show you how to read temperature, humidity, and even heat index before displaying it all on an I2C LCD1602 display. As always, before we start, a huge thanks to SunFounder for making this entire series possible. Throughout this series, we'll be using this amazing SunFounder Arduino Uno R4 Minima Ultimate Sensor Kit. This comprehensive kit provides everything you'll need to build exciting Internet of Things projects. So, if you are still looking for a comprehensive kit, I highly recommend checking out this product. It's available on both the SunFounder website and Amazon. Links are in the description below. So now, let's begin! For this session, you need the following materials. A DHT11 or DHT22 sensor module. An I2C LCD1602 display a button module, a breadboard, some connecting wires, and your Arduino Uno R4 Minima. Here's how to connect everything. This budget-friendly DHT11 sensor can measure both temperature and humidity. This is great for projects where you need to monitor your environment, like a DIY weather station. The best part is that it works seamlessly with popular microcontrollers like Arduino, ESP32, and Raspberry Pi. The sensor typically has four pins and requires an additional pull-up resistor to its data pin. However, most DHT11 modules, like this one we're using, come pre-assembled with the built-in resistor, making it even easier to use. This module only exposes three pins, negative, positive, and data output. Now, the DHT11 can be powered by either 3.3 volts or 5 volts. However, there's a key difference. Using 5 volts allow for longer cables, up to 10 feet. This gives you more flexibility when placing your sensor outside your house to monitor outdoor temperature and humidity. For this demo, we'll use the 5 volt power supply of the Arduino board. Then, connect the data output pin to any digital pin of your Arduino Uno. I'll use pin 2 for this demonstration. Now, just a reminder, when using pre-made modules like this, double-check the specific pinouts as it may vary depending on the manufacturer. Mine is ground, VCC, and then data out from right to left, but yours might be different. Next, this I2C LCD1602 display is just a regular 16x2 LCD that comes with an I2C module cleverly attached to the back enabling it to communicate with your Arduino Uno using only two wires, SDA or serial data and SEL or serial clock. This is a great way to add a portable display to your Arduino projects without sacrificing precious I.O. pins. This also comes with a backlight, enabled by this jumper cap. You can remove this cap to disable the backlight. Now, this blue potentiometer controls the contrast. Turning it clockwise increases the contrast, while turning it counterclockwise reduces the contrast. So, connecting your I2C LCD1602 to your Arduino is super easy. Simply connect the ground and the VCC pins of the LCD to the ground and the 5 volt pins of your Arduino respectively. Then, connect the SDA and the SEL pins of your LCD to the SDA and SEL pins of your Arduino. Pins A4 and A5 can also be used since they are both connected to the same I2C bus marked with the pins SDA and SEL. To begin with our code, we need to install the necessary libraries to communicate with the DHT sensor and I2C LCD1602 display. First, open the library manager and then look for the DHT sensor library by Adafruit. Note that this library is compatible with both DHT11 and DHT22.
Also, we need to install the Liquid Crystal I2C library by Frank de Brabander. Now, in our code, let's start with the LCD. So, we need to include the Liquid Crystal underscore I2C.h. Next, we'll create an object of the Liquid Crystal I2C class for interfacing with the LCD. We'll call it LCD. Now, to initialize this object, it requires three arguments. First is the LCD address. For this module, the default address is 27 hexadecimal. That's 0x27 when written in C language. However, in some cases, the address may be 3f. Now, please double check your specific LCD's documentation for its address, as it might be different. The second is the number of columns. This LCD can accommodate 16 characters per row. Now, the third argument is the number of rows, and it has two rows. In the setup function, we need to initialize the LCD object using the init function. Then, we clear the LCD, and then turn the backlight on. Now, to print a message on the first row, we need to position the cursor using the set cursor method. This requires two arguments. First is the x coordinate, which determines how many character positions from the left, and this is zero based. For example, if we want to start printing on the third column from the left, we'll put here 2. Then the second argument is the y coordinate. So 0 means first row. Now, say we want to print education is on the first row. And then on the second row, starting on the seventh column, we want to print the word life. Now, let's upload the code first to see if it works. And as you can see, Education is Life is printed on the LCD at the expected location. Basically, these are the common methods that you'll often use to print something on an LCD 16 display. However, there are other methods in this object that you can experiment with. Most of them are self-explanatory. For example, if we want to make the text education is life blink, we could call the methods display and no display alternately. Here, we'll simply use the delay function for demo purposes. Now, let's upload the code and verify the result. And it works. Now, to use the DHT11 sensor in our code, we need to include the DHT sensor library by Adafruit. Before we create an instance of this DHT class, first, we'll define the DHT pin where the sensor is connected, and that's pin 2. Also, define the DHT type, which is DHT11. Here, you can specify another type, such as DHT22. And then to create a DHT object, we need to specify two arguments, the DHT pin and the DHT type. In the setup function, all we need to do is to call the DHT begin function. Now, reading data from a DHT sensor is fairly straightforward. Simply call the read humidity and read temperature methods. However, you must know that the DHT11 sensor has a sampling frequency of 1 Hz, which means it is capable of reading data after every 1 second. Please note that sensor readings may vary affected by several factors. It can read as fast as 250 milliseconds or could take up to 2 seconds for older sensors. For this, we'll put a 2 second delay before reading the values. Then, we'll create two local variables of type float. The first one we'll call h, we'll use it to store the humidity readings. The second one we'll call t, we'll use it to store the temperature readings. 
Now, the read temperature method accepts an optional parameter of type Boolean. If we do not specify anything here, the default temperature reading is degrees Celsius. However, if you want the values to be read in degrees Fahrenheit, you can set this to true. Now, before displaying the humidity and temperature on our LCD, we need to be sure that these sensor readings are received properly. To do that, we'll use the function isNone. This function checks if the value of a variable being asked is not a number. If so, it returns true. So, if either the humidity or the temperature is not a number, we'll print a message, failed to read from the HT sensor. Now, since this message is more than 16 characters long, I'll print the failed to read on the first row. And then, the from DHT sensor on the second row. Finally, we'll call the return keyword so that it exceeds this function immediately and start the loop function again to start reading. However, if both H and T variables contain valid numerical values, this indicates a successful reading from the DHT sensor. We can now proceed with displaying the humidity and temperature data. So to print the humidity readings on line 1, we'll set the cursor position at 00. zero. Then let's print the word HUMI followed by a space and then followed by the actual humidity value. And finally, the percent symbol. Here, we've added three spaces after the percent character in the format string. This ensures that any previously displayed characters in these positions are cleared and replaced with empty spaces. Then, to print the temperature readings on line 2, we'll set the cursor position at 0, 1. Similarly, let's print temp, followed by the actual temperature value, now, to print the degree symbol or other special characters, you may refer to this web page. It shows the list of 256 characters together with their decimal code from 0 to 255. For example, the degree symbol has a code of 2 to 3. So, we'll print this code. However, we need to cast this to type car so that we can see the actual character printed instead of just the number 223. And finally, we print the character C followed by three spaces as well. And let's upload the code to see if it works. And as you can see, the humidity and temperature values are properly displayed and updated every 2 seconds. Now, let's try to simulate the DHT sensor reading invalid data. The simplest way to do this is to remove the sensor. And as you can see, an error message of fail to read from DHT sensor appears. Now, let's put it back. Again, it was able to read the sensor values successfully. Aside from getting the humidity and temperature, we can also compute the heat index. Heat index, also known as apparent temperature, is what the temperature feels like to the human body when relative humidity is combined with the air temperature. We can easily get the heat index using the DHT method compute heat index. This requires two arguments temperature and humidity, and a third optional argument of Boolean type, true for Fahrenheit, which is the default, and false for Celsius. So, let's store the result of this computed heat index in Celsius to a local variable we'll call HIC. To display the heat index along with the humidity and temperature readings, let's have a short delay here of, say, 3 seconds, to switch between displays. So on line 1, we'll print heat index, again padded with spaces. Then on line 2, we'll print a few spaces as well before printing the HIC value. 
And finally, we'll print the degree Celsius. Okay, let's upload the code and verify the result. And as you can see, the humidity and temperature readings, as well as the heat index, are being displayed alternately. For your challenge activity, try to improve this project by adding a button. As you can observe, the output is almost similar to what we have accomplished so far. However, when we press this button, the units of measure used for the temperature and heat index readings change from the default degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. And then, the next time we press the button, the units of measure change again back to degrees Fahrenheit. Pressing this button simply cycles through these two units of measure. To continuously improve your skills from the previous lesson, you can implement either by using a MILIS or by hardware interrupt. Again, thank you so much for joining me in this lesson. To keep this educational channel rolling, your support is very important. Please know that your likes and subscriptions fuel this channel. So by hitting that like button and subscribing, let me know you're enjoying this content. If you know someone who might find this helpful, don't hesitate to share it with them. The more viewers we have, the more in-depth content I can create for you in the future. Again, keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember, education is life. See you in our next lesson. Happy coding!